Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Mika Gem. Today is my exotic leather guide that I promised you I would film. I've been working on this video for a few weeks now. It's got a lot of detail. We have a lot um, to get through. Please consider please subscribing. But before we start, a disclaimer because I know people are going to yell at me in comments. Please do not watch this video if you don't like exotic so far because I feel like you'll be annoyed and then those of us who like them will be annoyed at you for whinging and moaning about it. Do you know what I mean? Just watch this video if you're interested in buying them, if you like them, even if you don't like them, but maybe, you know, you support me and you're interested, perhaps because you think, you know, maybe you might be interested in the future, um, feel free to watch. Those of you who support me, I'm sorry for the disclaimer. I have to give the disclaimer because of the internet. Without further ado, let's get started. So what are exotic leathers? Okay, exotic leathers are leathers that are made from animals that are considered exotic um, by the industry. Generally speaking, these are the following animals um, that would be used for exotic leathers. Python, which is obviously a snake. <laughs> ostrich, which is an ostrich. <laughs> Lizard. Reptile, pythons. Are, I mean, pythons. Snakes are also reptiles, right? Um, and then you have alligator, and then you have, of course, the crocodile. So those are generally speaking the ones that are used today. There was a period of time where stingray was used, but that's not really uh, popular at the moment with the mainstream brands. Um, it tends to be those animals that I mentioned. So there is kind of like a hierarchy, basically. Um, within the exotic leather world and clients who purchase exotics. Python is like at the bottom of the sort of like Python isn't seen as desirable at the moment and then you have croc which is obviously seen as the most desirable. Which exotics should you buy? I think you should buy the exotics that you like and I think you should buy the ones that obviously suit your budget and critically you should buy the ones that suit your aesthetics. So we're going to talk about Big H, we're going to talk about Fendi, we're going to talk about Dior and Louis Vuitton in this video. We're also going to talk about judgment and how to deal with that. We'll talk about that at the end of the video because I think that's actually really important as well. We're not going to get political, so please don't get political in the comments and stuff about whether people should wear these leathers or not. It's a consumer choice, with as, as is most things. Everyone works really hard for their money. No one's going to check me on what I can and cannot buy. That's kind of my view on it. If you don't like that, that's fine. You can go watch another channel. If you're cool with that, keep watching. Okay, so which exotics should you buy? I am going to tell you what I think you should do. We'll talk about judgment. We'll talk about how to um, decide which is the right one for you. I feel like right now, one of the biggest trends in exotic leather is matte finishes. So the matte finish versus the sort of more classic patent um, finish. Um, I feel like the matte finish is more, it's, it's like, I don't know, I feel like the, the younger generation of clients that like um, exotics tend to prefer the matte finish. I've kind of noticed that in groups and um, older um, my clients tend to prefer the shiny one. I mean, I'm 35 and I've always preferred the glossy patent exotic um, like finishes over the more matte ones. That's just me. I mean, I don't know how people um, view it, but I just prefer those ones. I think that they, they look better, but I do feel like the matte ones are just really popular right now. Another huge trend with exotics is lots of color. Um, exotics, in my opinion, just look better in color. They don't lend themselves to neutrals that much. Maybe ostrich, it looks okay because the, with the ostrich leather, you get to see the way the neutrals look, but color is huge with exotics. Like people want to see the color, people want to see those like, I don't know, people want to see the textures of the leather and that's the thing that people really love when it pertains um, to exotics specifically. People absolutely love the color. Um, and I think another trend as well is like smaller exotic bags. So like the mini bags. So the mini bag trend in the standard leathers that we've seen across all of these major brands translates into exotics as well. So we see this with the mini uh, Kelly Pochette. Uh, um, mini Kelly, the Mini Kelly in, in Croc. We've seen this with the Kelly Pochette as well. People love those smaller bags right now. And, you know, we do want bigger bags to come back. Um, there are some people who feel like the smaller exotics also feel more ethical just because you, you're using less, less parts of the animal hide itself. So I feel like that's also a massive trend as well. Now, 
When it pertains to what are the differences between the leather, I want to kind of just explain it to you. If you've purchased exotics before, you probably know these differences, but let me quickly explain. So at the top of the food chain, we have, of course, the very beautiful crocodile. Hello from Africa, honey. Hey. Um, and um, we have two variants of that beautiful animal, which is, of course, the porosus crocodile. And then you have the nilaticus crocodile, more commonly refer referred to as nilo. So we're going to refer to it as Nilo, not saying the thugged out Latin name because that can be quite hard to say over and over again. So you have the Nilo croc and then you have Porosis. Porosis is at the top of the food chain, okay, because that is the saltwater crocodile, okay. Nilo is probably just like under it and then after that you have the Mississippiensis alligator, more commonly known as the American alligator. So what are the differences between both of those leathers? The porosis crocodile, um, and you, you notice this in porosis um, leather options, particularly from Big Cage, those scales are much tighter, they're much smaller, it, it almost looks like a jewel in a way. You can see these different kind of dimensions in it, and the scales and the texture is very, very tight. The grain is much tighter and much smaller. Um, versus say the nylo crop which has much bigger scales okay so that would be the uh, difference it's just a personal preference um, some people prefer the smaller uh, like the smaller basically porosis leather for bags because they feel like it just looks much more intricate some people don't like that some people like nylo because it's much more i feel like nylo is much more flashy it's much more out there especially depending on the color it's much more flashy and out there okay so that's the difference between porosis and nylo even though porosis is technically speaking i think especially at big h big h see porosis as like the top of the food chain so we're going to use the way they see it so once we put Nilo and Porosis to the side, then you have the American Alligator. Now, the American Alligator is obviously where alligator leather comes from. Alligator leather tends to be used for different types of bags, particularly at Big Cage. You tend to see it being used for smaller bags. So you see the Mini Ruli is made um, as well in alligator. And I think at the moment, like the Mini Ruli is really just coming in those alligator finishes. The exotic Kelly wallets come in alligator as well. The Constance um, also comes in alligator. So you see those kind of smaller bags at the moment. Alligator leather is different um, from the two variants of the crocodile leather because the animal itself is very different. Alligators are smaller than crocodiles. Alligators are, are, are you know, fierce, magnificent creatures, but definitely crocodiles are much stronger physically. The alligator has a U-shaped snout, whereas the crocodile has like a V-shaped snout. So the crocodile's snout is like this, the alligator's um, snout is like that. The, uh, the porosis crocodile's um, skin is tougher and harder than the alligator's um, skin as well. Something else to note is um, alligators are freshwater animals and crocodiles are saltwater animals. And um, it's said that the porosis variant is said to be a very fierce, um, dominating uh, predator in the wild. And that kind of really translates onto the leather because the leather is very durable and it's very, very hard. Um, very, I mean, it's just super beautiful. Um, just on a personal note, I remember when I was like 11, I went on a trip with my parents. They went on a work trip um, to the US and we went to Florida and I visited a alligator farm with my mom and my dad. And that was like the first time I'd seen alligators. Of course, I've seen crocodiles before, but that was the first time I'd seen alligators. And they were explaining to us the difference between the two. And um, I've been obsessed with alligators and crocodiles ever since. I think they're really magnificent, phenomenal creatures, to be honest. Very interesting as well. Okay, now let's move on to ostrich. Ostrich is probably the only leather, leather here that is not reptilian. And ostrich, um, I think, is kind of trending upwards at the moment. A lot of people... Um, feel stressed about purchasing rep reptilian leather and people feel like it's more ethical to buy os ostrich leather I don't necessarily agree, but this isn't really the video for discussing what's ethical and what's not I think it's just a consumer choice and I think you as a consumer have every right to decide what's right for you Ostrich leather is popping for the sort of brighter colors. So I've seen it in the Louis Vuitton Capucine I've seen they've been making them in ostrich. I believe you can actually do a special order of ostrich at Louis Vuitton as well Of course, you can do special orders at Big H as well 
ostrich lends itself to those beautiful vibrant candy colors um it looks really really great in pink it looks great in green it looks great in red it looks great in bright bright vibrant colors i personally wouldn't buy like a black ostrich bag it also looks really good in gray i feel like you want to see the dots from the leather kind of stand out now after that i will put lizard normally i would have put lizard above ostrich i'm going to put lizard next because lizard at the moment tends to be used for bags that are bags and slgs you tend to see lizard more in like slgs at the houses so louis vuitton uses um lizard for like the, them their smaller bags and things like that um when it pertains to big h um, it's very rare to see like a large lizard Kelly for example they're incredibly rare um, if you have ever been offered this bag that means that they think very highly of you they will not offer it to someone who's going to decline it they're going to offer it to someone who likes exotics it's my understanding that the lizard Kelly tends to only really go to people who've purchased exotics before it's a very very difficult offer to get I mean, it's incredibly rare lizard i feel like is awesome because it is the most subtle leather out of all of the exotic leathers it's incredibly subtle um it from any brand whether it's big h or any other brand honestly no one's really gonna know that it's real honestly most people will not know it's real i know some of you are want to buy exotics but you're worried about like judgment and are people going to judge you are people going to know it's real no one will know that this leather is real um it's very 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 subtle in my opinion in any color in any finish it's almost impossible to tell if it's real or not there's also like ombre lizard so you get you see that a lot at big h they have um the mini bruli i think it comes in an ombre finish they also have i think a constance in an ombre finish but i might need to pull up some pictures from instagram um this one is very much an acquired taste a lot of people don't like this i don't know how i feel about the ombre lizard i feel like i would need to see it in person um in order to know but ombre also is another really hot trend in exotic leathers across the board i've seen um ombre uh, the ombre exotics done at fendi as well so i think it just depends um i think it's just a personal preference like some people would be like well this is maybe a little bit too much this is a very special offer though okay and now after all of that my personal favorite <laughs> python um, Python is one of my personal favorites because that was the first exotic like designer handbag I ever got was in that leather from Lulu Guinness and Python is yeah just a truly uh, a very interesting leather Python I think is kind of falling out of favor amongst people who shop exotics because people don't think it's special enough I feel like python is really cool i think it just needs to be made correctly some of you have told me that you feel like python isn't as durable as the other leathers um it's probably i don't know if durable is the right word i feel like you need to you do need to kind of take care of your python bags maybe a little bit more than you would need to take care of a croc bag there are a lot of you who've told me before like that you feel like croc is more durable some of you have said you think croc is more fragile i think it just depends on the way you take care of your bags i think if you take care of your bags um then the leather will be um the, the leather will kind of withstand basically stuff but python definitely does require a little bit more babying i remember when i had that bag it's actually in storage when i had it like it really did require you to kind of take care of it and to store it properly because the the scales can sometimes the scales can sometimes look like they can peel off or fall off so you need to kind of be a little bit more aware of that as well so those are the main leathers that um i have just quickly walked you through now what should you buy this year what do i think is really cool and really hot they're new exotics from all of the major brands the new ones from gucci the new ones from big h the new ones from louis vuitton fendi have got some new ones as well do you all have some new ones um so like which ones should you buy i feel like if you're unsure about exotics but you're interested go with lizard no one will know that the bag is real i am telling you now you literally will be the only person that knows and me <laughs> and other people who like exotics will be like okay that's a lizard bag i think lizard is super subtle i think if you're someone who's a minimalist you don't really want to come across like super flashy if that's not your personal style i feel like lizard and python looks really good python i think is great for those of you who love neutrals i think python looks really great in the natural color of the python um skin itself it looks really nice it kind of lends itself to people who have a neutral color palette so that's like um you know i've seen i've seen some i've seen some options at gucci and fendi where they use like the natural python skin itself it looks really really nice so you can wear it with all kinds of neutrals caramels beige 
gray, sage, mint. You can wear it with a, a wide range of neutrals. So I think if you love neutrals, Python is a really, really nice leather um, to work with because basically when it pertains to Python, you look for the colors within the python skin itself sometimes they, they do treat the leather so they'll dye it and they'll add a lot of color but if it's the natural python leather itself it looks beautiful with a wide range of neutrals so i would definitely recommend that um i feel like ostrich is a great option for people who don't like the reptilian skins there's some people um some of you have told me like look i think it's really cool i just can't get into the fact it's a re reptilian leather i totally understand i completely respect your decision as well so I think a great option would be ostrich. Ostrich looks very unique. People um, have to know that ostrich bags are actually quite rare to see them in the wild. I think I saw one when I was in Paris and I double took, I was like, what? What? You know, I was just so happy to see someone carrying their ostrich bag out. Um, it's not as common as you think. They're incredibly unique, very rare. If you were, uh, let's say you're someone who loves Big H, or you love Louis Vuitton and you're meeting up with friends who all have designer handbags, I guarantee you if you go with an ostrich Hermes bag or an ostrich Louis Vuitton bag, you'll be the only person there. They're very, very, very rare to see out and about. They're very unique. I think they're perfect for people who want to be different. You don't want to be like everyone else that has their Clemence or Togo bucket. You don't want to be like everyone else that has their Torillon um, leather bag from Louis Vuitton. Like, ostrich i think is really great ostrich looks amazing in color if you love color i think it's for you as well and then now let's talk about my two other favorites the alligator and the croc leathers now i feel like alligator is great just because the price point isn't as crazy as porosus or nylo um some people feel like the finish is the same the finish isn't the same the leathers are completely different an alligator bag does not look like a process bag a process bag does not look like a nylo bag no one will know the difference if someone asks you what it is they're going to think it's a crocodile bag well guess what alligators and crocodiles are not the same animal they're two completely different um, animals yes they're similar same thing a crocodile isn't an alligator an alligator isn't a caiman okay they're completely different um i like alligator because of the price point as well i have to say i think the price point particularly at big cage and at Louis Vuitton, I feel like the price point is much better than um, the Porosus variants. Now, let's talk about um, Porosus and Nilo. I think the Mini Kelly comes in Nilo. I think the Kelly Pochette comes in Nilo. Um, of course, the Birkin comes in Porosus. So I feel like these ones are just very special pieces. I have to say, my two like holy grail exotic bags, like I would be honored to get like a Him Himalayan Kelly as an offer. I feel like that would be such a phenomenal offer. But to live on planet Earth, I would love to get like a Kelly 28, um, a Cellier in um, Porosis. I feel like that would be a phenomenal offer. That costs an absolute and total fortune. If I can find a price from the past forum, I'll put it. If I can find a price from the past forum, I'll put it up on the screen if I can find it. It costs an, a sweet fortune. One of um, my uh, group admins, Lucia, she had posted in the group a while ago that a Birkin 30 process was 43,000 euros in Paris. I mean, these, um, <laughs> these products are not cheap, so you can really see the difference in pricing. So in terms of pricing, let, let me just give you an idea. A Birkin 30 ostrich last year at um, Big H was about 13,500 euros. A Kelly 28, um, in ostrich was about 16,000 euros. A Kelly 28 in alligator in Cellier is about 39,000 euros. So you can see the jump there between the alligator and croc pricing and the ostrich pricing. Another example, um, I believe the uh, I, I believe in Mel and Melbourne's unboxing, she said her mini Kelly in ostrich was 14,000 US, I think it was like 14,300 US dollars. A mini Kelly in Nilo Croc in the US is 26,600 US dollars. So you can see that the jump is quite big. I think it's just a question of budgeting and your aesthetics. For me, I like the exotic leathers more than necessarily. Um, for me, I don't just like one leather. I like them all. I think they all have something um, to offer. So I would be completely fine taking any of them. I feel like ostrich 
lizard and python are just priced better um and i feel like there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of options there because they know that a lot of people will be looking for the maybe the more affordable ones louis vuitton had a beautiful python um twist i don't know if it's still on the site um if it is i'll put a picture on the screen if it's not forgive me and they were selling it for 4100 euros i think it was in the pm size it was a really beautiful piece so you do have um that not necessarily deals because they're very very expensive products but you definitely do have some absolutely useful options and you don't have to pay that massive premium in terms of alligator or croc so which exotics should you buy this year i want to tell you what i am loving at the moment gucci have got some beautiful new exotic finishes um particularly for the diana i'm loving the diana in python in the exotic finish it looks very very glamorous absolutely love it and i think that um if you're into the diana i would look into it i feel like gucci is known for their use of python i feel like a python gucci piece is really really nice um i would definitely definitely look into gucci i think they've also made like a super cute pink one it's so cute so darling i would go check out gucci i really really like their use of python i feel like their python is actually quite pricey compared to other brands as python but they are known for it like python is one of their trademarks it's one of their things um you know for as long as gucci make python and if you like python i would look into that as well just before talking about the other major houses there are two um independent brands i think you should check out there's a designer called jason stalve his brand is called stalve he makes lots of really cute mini um exotic leather bags they're super super cute um there's also nancy gonzalez she also uses um exotic leather and a lot of her products um she's from colombia i really really like them so if you're interested in supporting a brand that's independent and a contemporary uh, uh, a contemporary luxury brand that uses exotics try out those two now let me tell you what i like at fendi fendi have got some really great exotics the fendi first it comes in croc canal um they're all kinds of different exotics there was a time when they made these really cool python ombre peekaboos they were so cute so darling they were like minis i don't think i could find the pictures from ages ago they were so cute i missed out on those as well really 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 nice i am also loving the sheepskin fur um peekaboos they're really really cute i saw those i thought they were really really nice so go check out fendi i'm kind of more interested at the moment in shopping from fendi and louis vuitton and gucci because there's no like game to like purchase their exotics like i can walk in and be like hello i'd like to buy a fendi you know peekaboo with sheepskin fur and they're gonna sell it to you or hi i want to buy like a fendi first in python they're gonna sell it to you their python fendi first are also very very cute as well so um i would tell you to look into that i think that their exotic pricing is very competitive as well compared to um big cage so that's something to know now let's talk about one of my favorites for exotics louis vuitton louis vuitton are not playing with you guys okay louis vuitton honey she is not playing she wants a check okay louis vuitton is not playing so when i was in paris um if you guys watch my parisian videos um you will know that i told you this but if you haven't let me just tell you when i was in paris i bought some things at louis vuitton and um for like my family as well I bought myself the louise earrings and then i was like oh you know i like exotics can you show me maybe next time when i come i'll buy them so he knew i wasn't buying yes he knew i wasn't gonna buy it today he showed me a himalayan uh he showed me a himalayan capucine bb it was absolutely stunning okay it was so heavy but it was beautiful absolutely amazing they take you somewhere private to show it to you um and he was like you know i'm actually not the like essay for exotics like if you want to the day you want to buy and you come like i'll come with you to the appointment but they actually have like a an essay who like just does the exotic stuff they put on gloves they put this like mat down and then they put the bag down and they start showing it to you um yeah absolutely beautiful you can tell that 100 percent if you're going to buy something they will um, give you the red carpet treatment which i think is what you should get 
Um, that's obviously not what happens at Big H. You have to beg um, to buy their bags. But I, I, th I think I'm more interested in buying a Big H. Uh, I mean, I'm more interested in buying a Louis Vuitton, Gucci, or Fendi exotic because I know that they're going to treat you well. Um, and then if you see something that you like, I think I've told you guys before, if you see something you like, um, let's say at the Champs Elysees store, but it's in the boutique in another town, like let's say it's in Lyon or something, they will bring it from wherever it is in France and they'll deliver it to where you are, you know, as long as you're going to purchase it. I feel like Louis Vuitton's um, is probably the most transparent as well about like sustainability and how they farm the exotic leather skins in a way that is sustainable. Um, so for those of you who do care about that, um, you should definitely look into that. They have this thing called the Crocodilian Standard. They own their entire supply chain as well, so that's really interesting. I love what I'm seeing on the exotic side from Louis Vuitton. They have a wide range of them. They, they also have mink capucines if you're interested. Um, they have so, so much going on. All of the exotics at Louis Vuitton are basically seasonal except the alligator and and alligator slash croc capucines and twists those ones seem like they're permanent so at any given time you should be able to find a alligator capucine or uh, or a alligator twist you should be able at any given time to find them um, and then you have things like the petit quad chapeau you have things like the mini dauphine those come as well in alligator but they're seasonal so louis vuitton operate on a one in one out thing they will wait until they sell that exotic in the boutique until they bring another exotic there so if you buy if you see something that you like you need to buy it when you saw it i saw an absolutely beautiful um, ombre lizard twist when I was in Paris. I thought it was absolutely stunning, completely breathtaking. Um, and that one, I saw that at the concession at La Samaritaine. So that one will be sold. Um, li literally, that one, when that one gets sold, you're not going to see it again. It will then be replaced by another exotic piece. Louis Vuitton's exotics, I feel like, are very rare because um, they just don't make that um, many of them. But they've actually like expanded their exotic leather situation. They have a new workshop in Vendôme um, in France. And they said that it's going very well for them. There was an interview that was done. And yeah, they said that they're selling a lot of these bags and people are buying them and people love them. So I feel like the thing with exotics is like people like them. They just don't talk about it on social media or do unboxings on YouTube, but they are being purchased and people are buying them and really like them as well. Now, Dior, um, I feel like I'm warming up to Dior a little bit now because I feel like their exotics look way better, particularly in the Lady Dior style. I don't like the saddle um, and some of their other bags um, in, in croc and stuff. I'm just not really interested. But the Lady Dior in Lizard, I feel like is absolutely beautiful. I've seen some on Instagram that I thought were completely stunning. So I feel like if you're interested in something very subtle, I do feel like a Lizard Lady Dior would be a great thing for, for those of you who don't want something that's really flashy. So that's something also that you can go and watch out for and um, look out for. One of the biggest um, things when it pertains to exotics is the price. So let's talk about how much these things cost because they do cost a lot of money. A Capucine Mini at Louis Vuitton is 17,000 euros. Okay, so that's a lot. The Himalayan um, Capucine BB that I saw in Croc, that one was 30,500 euros. So it's quite pricey. I mean, you'll get the VAT refund, but it's still quite pricey. The, I think an ostrich capucine is about 10,000 euros, give or take. So like an ostrich capucine is like 10,000. An ostrich, Kelly Pochette, a Big H is like 8,500. So you can see that, you know, Big H's pricing is quite high if you compare it to Louis Vuitton. I think that Fendi, um, Louis Vuitton and Gucci are pricing their exotics very well. I think they're very competitive. So I think if you like exotics, even though they're not that many mainstream brands that make them, you're actually spoiled for a lot of choice in terms of where you can take your money. When Big C discontinued exotics, that really kind of opened up the field for Louis Vuitton because Louis Vuitton and Big H then took all of Chanel's clients who were buying exotics, went to Louis Vuitton and went to Big H. The benefit, I think, of buying exotics from Louis Vuitton, Gucci and Fendi and Dior is you don't have to play games. You can just walk in there. They're going to treat you well. They will offer you champagne. I was offered drinks. Okay. 
They will offer you champagne. They'll take you somewhere private. They'll put on gloves. They'll show it to you. They'll really sell you the bag. They won't fob you off or treat you badly, generally speaking. If you say, even for, even, generally speaking, I think particularly in uh, France, even for Python, um, you might be like, well, I'm just going to buy a Python bag. They, it's, it's an, it is an exotic leather bag. They will take it very seriously. And if you tell them, I want to see three or four exotics, they'll show you them. They're not pressed, particularly Louis Vuitton, because they take this so seriously. So what um, should you buy this year? If you're interested, let me tell you about the exotics I'm interested in. They're constantly changing, but let me just tell you about the ones that I like for this year. It doesn't mean I'm buying any of them. I might buy one. I might buy all of them. Um, it just depends how I feel when I travel. I'm really, really loving the Fendi um, uh, Peekaboo in the sheepskin fur. I really, really like it. I like fur as well. I like their mink fur, like shoes and slides and things like that. I think they're super cute, very, very darling. Um, I really, really like that. Um, and I also like the Python Fendi Fuss um, from Fendi. I think they look really, really good. I think they're also priced very competitively and that is interesting to me. From Louis Vuitton, I really like the ostrich capucine. Um, I also really like the croc uh, capucine mini um, from Louis Vuitton. I think it's really beautiful. I saw this really stunning lizard capucine um, at, on the Louis Vuitton website. I don't know if it's still there. I thought it was also priced very well, and I like that one a lot as well. From Gucci, it's really about the Diana for me. I used to like the Dionysus in the exotic finishes. I do love the Dionysus as well in the exotic finishes. It looks very cute. So I'll look for that as well but i do love what i'm seeing from the diana and then of course your girl big h honey what do i like what don't i like <laughs> i like all of their exotics i like the kelly pochette and croc i think it looks really great i feel like the kelly pochette and croc is a stunning evening bag i feel like it would be such a gorgeous evening bag i also like the mini kelly um and croc i think it's very luxurious i feel i still feel like the kelly pochette and croc looks better but i feel like it looks really really great I've already told you my grail piece would be a Kelly 28 Cellier in alligator or, or process. I feel like I would be just so happy to get that. I wouldn't get that this year though. I feel like that would have to be something for next year. But also like the Birkin 30 in ostrich. I feel like that would be a really great um, way for me to start my Big H exotic collection. I really like it. I think it looks great in the vibrant colors. I also like the price point. It's like 13,500 euros in the EU. Um, I also like, of course, the Mini Ruli. I like it in Croc, although I must say, I just found out the price for the Mini Ruli in Croc, and I think I got a bit of sticker shock now, because it's like 17,000 US dollars. I feel like that's a lot of money to spend for a, a non-quota um, exotic piece at Big Age. I feel like I'd rather take that money and go one-to-one -one and ask for like a Kelly Pochette in Croc if they have it. <laughs> you know, because it is a non quote bag, but I do love the mini Ruli, uh, generally speaking, in Evercolor as well. There's also some ostrich mini Rulis. I think those can look really good in the lighter colors. So I would also be interested in an ostrich one too. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll put a lizard lady duel because the, the lizard lady duels have like convinced me to give duel a chance. Um, I really do like them. I think they're very glamorous and they're very chic and very elegant as well. So those are the ones that I would take. Now I want to kind of talk to you guys about how to deal with judgment. I know some of you are worried about that. So what I would say um, about judgment is as follows. I feel like you should just um, not be too worried about it because it's very rare that someone will try and check you about it. But in case someone does, for example, how do you deal if someone asks you, is that a real crop bag? like depending on the situation let's say you're all out and people ask you is that real um i'm never gonna lie and say it's fake like i'm not because i don't feel like i have anything to be ashamed of if you if you feel uncomfortable um with maybe saying if it's real or not you could just be like yeah you know like it's you know you could just be like oh it's faux if you want to but i how, how i would respond to that i'd be like yeah it's real just answer the question like yeah it's real you know I think what you'll find in most cases is people will not try and come for you. People will not try and drag you. Um, I had people when I had that Python bag, like I had people asking me like, is that real, is that real snake skin? Like, yeah, it is. Like, do you want to know anything else about it? 
people are not going to ask you because they realize and they know that they are uh, being rude. So it's not really something to worry about. It's very rare that people will directly come for you. And if they do, you just tell someone very politely that, you know, you respect their opinion, but this is your consumer choice and you want your consumer choice to be respected. So I found out that exotic shaming is a thing apparently. So you can also tell people don't exotic shame me. Um, I said that in a group <laughs> once. <laughs> After I heard about the phrase, um, people were saying the types of bags they want to buy and I was like, oh, I'd love to get exotics from Big H and this person was like, oh, you shouldn't buy them. I was like, don't exotic shame me. It's my money. It's my consumer choice. And the person was like, oh my gosh, exotic shaming is a thing. I'm like, yeah, it's a thing and you're not allowed to do it. When you use that word shame, people feel bad because they realize they're being judgmental. So you can always, always tell people, please don't exotic shame me. I respect your consumer choices. I would like you to respect mine. That is how I approach things on my channel. I watch all kinds of things. I've watched vegan leather unboxings. I, if you like vegan leather, honey, I will support you to buy that. If there's a cute vegan leather bag, send it to me, show it to me, honey. If it's pink, you know I'll buy it, okay? Because I'm not judgmental. So the same grace that I would sh share to people who don't like exotics, I expect that same grace in return for the exotics and fur pieces that I do like because I don't judge anyone's consumer choices so I wouldn't want my consumer choices judged. So I feel like that's how you do it. I feel like also when you're playful and fun, depending on if you know the person, um, I had once like, uh, like many years ago, um, someone was like kind of, someone who I know was kind of like judging me for liking exotics, you know, was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you would do that. And then you say you actually like those animals, but you, you know, they're being whatever, being killed for their, for their skin and all of this. And I think it's, you know, the person was just kind of going off on a tangent. I'm like, I know you're not trying to check me and you're wearing leather shoes, okay? Don't try and check me, okay, if you're wearing leather shoes. And the person zipped it up because they knew where i was going don't be a hypocrite so i think sometimes like you can see if you know the person sometimes when you make it a joke and you're like hold on wait not you being a hypocrite that tends to get people to shut up okay because if someone eats caviar if you use silk you know you um eat honey you can't come and check someone over buying that stuff i don't care how people justify it let people buy things that they love that they're passionate about i don't judge anyone's consumer choices i'm literally that person where if you are buying a luxury thing that you like i will support you like go ahead and go away your vegan leather bags honey send me the pink ones i'll wear them <laughs> but don't judge my choices so i think if you know the person make it like a joke like i know you're not trying to check me you got leather shoes on girl let me stop you right there okay that's what you need to say if you don't know the person you just respond cordially and say yes it's real um is there anything else you'd like to know about the bag i feel like when you talk talk like that you sound so unbothered and and pressed and that person will feel self-conscious because they're trying to check you they're trying to make you ashamed but if you just answer the question relaxed and comfortably people will not it's a very rare that people will say something to you. It happened to me so few times and I'm very public about the fact that I like exotics and I like fur. I repost them on my personal my personal page. My friends know I like them. I have friends who are vegan, they know I like them. I have friends who are like, you know, massive, like, oh, animals, animals, animals. They know I like them and they've never said anything, you know, nasty to me because they understand it's my choice and I respect their choices. So I hope that this exotic leather guide has been interesting. I hope it's been fun. Um, even if one person watches this video, I hope it's been helpful. If you want to ask me personal questions, some of you I know might be afraid to comment. Please comment. Don't be afraid. Honestly, very few people are going to judge you. I know people seem to think in their head people are going to run up to them in public and try and take their back in, their crop back from them. It's just not going to happen. And if it does, let me tell you something honey you do not want to do that to me you don't want to do that okay because it's going to be a gladiatorial battle and i'm going to win so these things are not it's, it's not really as common as what people think you know so don't be worried if you like them you should wear them with pride you've worked hard for them you've earned them big cage fendi louis vuitton are not giving these bags out for free sweetheart they're not giving these wallets out for free so you should be proud of the things that you've worked hard for and you've purchased with your money 
I really hope that you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you'd consider fully subscribing and liking this video. Liking the video is really important. Make sure you go join my Facebook group. Um, we're having a fun time there. Go follow my luxury Instagram, my TikTok. I'm relaunching my TikTok, okay? I've got a new strategy for my TikTok because it needs so much work. I've been doing Instagram lives and Facebook lives. I think that's been a cool way for me to um, connect with a lot of you. So I hope to do more of those. I'm going to be relaunching my TikTok. So please go follow my TikTok so you can give me the strength to post a few a week. If you follow me on TikTok, I will post more. But if you don't follow me, I'm going to be like, why am I posting like? you know like why am i posting let me know um what you think of today's video i would love to know which exotic bags you like um do you have any questions for me about which ones that you should purchase i honestly think fendi's exotics are priced very very well i think louis vuitton's exotics are priced well i think there are opportunities there if you're interested in getting like a really beautiful luxury exotic by the way i completely forgot to say all of the exotics mentioned in this video are handmade. Louis Vuitton's exotics are handmade. Louis Vuitton's exotic bags are the only bags that Louis Vuitton makes that are completely handmade, stitched from the minute they get the first hide till the end. For example, in Louis Vuitton's case, they take up to five um, hides of the leather to match them to make sure that it's completely uniform in color. They're taking it seriously. They have real artisans who are not playing around. Louis Vuitton's artisanship is the same as Big H's for exotics. So a, a Louis Vuitton exotic uh, leather artisan is the same in talent and skill as a Big H uh, exotic leather um, artisan. Um, so all of the all of the ones in this video, um, to my knowledge, and even of uh, Fendi and Gucci are handmade. So I think it's worth noting that as well, if that's important to you. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And then just super quick, the exotic leather stamps um, at, uh, at Hermes, they're like different stamps for alligator and for um, croc as well. You guys probably know about that. If you want to know about that, just leave a comment and I'll explain it in more detail in the comments. Um, one of my subscribers, Renan, actually told me that the exotic pieces at Louis Vuitton don't actually have an artisan stamp. Um, but as I said, in, in at a big age, they do have an artisan stamp. So I feel like Louis Vuitton should consider making like an artisan stamp for the exotic pieces because I feel like people want to know that. It's very cool. I really hope that you have liked today's video. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon in my next video.